welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to be doing question three from the 2017 paper two. And this is a cyclotron question and I've got a lovely video on my playlist about cyclotron. So if you check the card here you can actually watch it and see what's going on. Now a cyclotron has two D-shaped regions, they're D's because they're D-shaped, um, where a magnetic flux density is constant. The D-shaped regions are separated by a small gap and an AC current of field is between them. Explain why it is not possible for the magnetic field to alter the speed of a proton while it's in the D-shaped regions. This is quite simple. The only way you can adjust someone's velocity is to give it kinetic energy. To give it kinetic energy, you must have applied a force because energy is force times distance. Now, Newton's first law is all about the fact that the force must be in the direction to actually alter the speed of something, the force must be in the same direction as that speed. And the problem is, is that a charged particle is moving in a magnetic field. The force is perpendicular to the movement of the current. It can't change it. So this is actually the answer for 3.1. Is that because the force is perpendicular to the... Uh, movement of the proton. One mark. The speed cannot be changed through acceleration. Okay. So just that it's not possible the force is perpendicular to the motion. It can only change the particle's direction. No work is done. Okay, so for example here, that the, because the force is perpendicular to the movement of the proton, the speed cannot be changed through acceleration, so you can't physically, so you can change its direction, that's circular motion, remember if velocity is proportional to the, um, is perpendicular to the force, it is going to move in circular motion. So, which actually brings on me on to question 3.2, derive an expression to show that the time taken, but I've seen this question before in a different way, Time taken by a proton to travel around one semicircular path is independent of the radius taken. So, I know it's moving in a circle. So, I'm going to use a circular motion force, mv squared over r. I also know it is being affected. The thing that's moving it in a circle is a magnetic field. Okay. And... The force that's causing the circular motion is the force that's causing it to move in the magnetic field. So these force equations are together. So I've got mv squared over r equals b uh, qv. Let me get a different colour. These cancel. Now, the problem is here is that I have not got something to do with time. The only thing that has anything to do with time is this velocity. So velocity is the distance travelled over the time. Now, this is a semicircle. So the distance I would travel, okay, so we're actually going to talk more about speed here. The distance that I would travel is 2 pi r, so the circumference, divided by 2 because it's a semicircle. So this is going to be just pi r, so 2 pi r divided by 2 is pi r over time. And I'm going to put that formula all the way into this here. And I've got... So what I end up with is m pi r over rt equals bq, and the r's cancel. So derive an equation to show that time taken is independent, and independent means it has no relationship to. As you can see, because there is no r, I have time equals bq over m pi because I have this formula, there's no R in it, it is independent to that there. There's three marks available. One, circular motion. Even if you haven't got a clue, it's moving in a circle. It's shaped in a circle. Put a circular motion formula down. Put the thing that's causing the circular motion field, which is the magnetic field here. Next one is this part here. And the third one, which is getting a formula like this, okay, Oh, I do apologise, I think I've made a bit of an error on that one. Uh, T goes up, so it's M, M pi over BQ, that was my error, okay. Um, flipping it over, do apologise, that comes up, that comes down, I rearranged a little bit too soon. 
this part is the last part and the last mark. Okay? So the question here says the maximum radius of the path followed is 0.55 and the magnetic flux density of the field is 0.4 Tesla. Calculate the maximum speed of a proton as it leaves the actual cyclotron here. So I know that force equals BQV. Okay. And I want the maximum speed. And again, I know F equals MV squared over R. So put that in again. MV squared over R equals BQV. That cancels. And I end up with wanting the maximum speed. So V equals BQR over M. So I know that B is 0.44 Tesla. I know that Q is a proton, and this is the thing, they'll be sods with this. They won't give you the mass of the proton, and they won't give you the charge of the proton. You have to know it. So the charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. The charge, uh, the mass of a proton, which again is in the data sheet. Uh, let's find it. I cannot find it today. Mass of the proton. Uh, 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. All over, oh, wrong way, sorry. The radius was in the wrong place. The radius was 0.55 and this was 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. And let's actually put this into my calculator. So I've got 0.44 times by the charge, if I move over, the charge on a proton, so 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, times by the radius, 0.55, divided by 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. And I get quite a big answer, but I get 23 times 10 to the 6 metres per second. And if I check the mark scheme, it's 23, 2.3 times 10 to the 7, so I was okay with 23.6, 23 times 10 to the 6. The reason I got that number is because I pressed the eng button on my calculator, which puts things into engineering notation. So this is mega uh, metres per second. Okay, little trick saves you counting and moving all those decimal places. The frustrating part about this question is a lot of times I did see students were able to calculate this bit because they went, oh, it's circular motion, it's BQV, but they couldn't do the question above, which was the same thing with the same kind of formula. Okay, so here's a little hint for you. If you see a diagram of an object moving in a circular path, immediately go, I must be using mv squared over r or I'm going to be using m omega squared r, I'm going to be using my circular motion formula. And then you go, what is causing that circular motion? What is it? Oh, it's the magnetic force here. So I'm going to put the magnetic force equation down, and then I'm going to equate them, because the thing causing the centripetal force is this magnetic force. So BQV equals mv squared over r, and it goes from there. So that there is question three, and it's only worth six marks. So the first few questions of this paper have not really been worth many marks each. They've only been, uh, so far at question three, we're only 21 marks through out of the 45. So, note 45? Um, 32, I do apologise, I think a bit more than that. 45, no, 45, there. Okay, so please be aware of this as we go through the... Um, Thing, that these questions are very small in marks, which means that the rest of them will get much more detailed later. So that there was question three and paper two.